art history is a wonderful and magical place, especially when it involves me. My name, my name is John Thornton, and I'm about to take you on a wild art history adventure. I have managed to insert myself into many of the great old master paintings. In this one, I tried to recapture the blissful wonderment of infancy with all its tender charms for baby and mother alike. The Catholic Church, with all its magnificent guilelessness, inspired me to imagine myself as a cardinal. What a kindly and moral aspect I appear to bring to the job. In this image, I play the parts of Jesus as well as the dead man, Lazarus. Oh yes, the little muscular demon is also me. What image in all of Christendom is more beloved than that of mother and child? And when the babe is as cute as I am, what's not to like? At the end, mother and child are reunited in a scene of great anguish. This time I play Mary and the screenwriter John Cohen is the Lord God. Jesus wandered for 40 days and 40 nights and was tempted by the devil. In this case, my twin brother, National Magazine award-winning author Jim Thornton. I did a series on a little-known disciple of Christ known as Thorntonius. Here, Thorntonius uses his baited head to help pull off the so-called miracle of the fishes recounted in the New Testament. The widow of St. Castellus healed St. Sebastian of his arrow wounds, but she also was instrumental in removing the nails from the crucified noggin of Thorntonius. This strange image has to do with Thorntonius' guilt over becoming more popular than Jesus. He compared himself and Jesus to the Old Testament characters of Zara and Perez and sought forgiveness from his Lord. In this haunting image, I appear as Mary Magdalene, seated near a flock of birds. I wonder what the Sphinx might have looked like had I been the head pharaoh at the time of its creation. Here I depict myself and my brother in an Old Testament goulash of patriarchs, Egyptians, and woe. Like most people, I have spent long hours dreaming of the sexual licentiousness of the Arcadian past. Ah, what happiness to have been a satyr in those days. The old days seem to have had their fair share of men who like wine snifters, as well as the friendship of other wine snifting men. This depicts the servant of Roger Thornton being sacrificed to a great thunder lizard. I used da Vinci's wonderful painting of a woman and ermine, but reimagined myself as those two exotic creatures. Perhaps this is a very true self-portrait. I depict myself as a bit of a dandy, a bit of a dilettante. Borrowing hair from my son-in-law as well as other accoutrements, I envisage myself as a handsome English rider. With the addition of the communist flag, my fine young English gentleman has gained a social conscience and is off to foment a bloody revolution at Newcastle upon Tyne. I get the thrill of playing all three parts in this poignant scene of decapitation. Perhaps in the olden days I would have ridden out on a noble steed for a hunting expedition. I somehow think that aristocratic children of the olden days were more likely to engage in poor behavior than today's youth. If I had been Napoleon, I would have spent more of my time in genetic research than in warfare. 
coming up with a really good human golden retriever pet would have been my greatest ambition, not conquering the world. Mosby was a general during the Civil War. I don't know how he would have reacted to seeing a man with plague as well as a Tyrannosaurus Rex in the midst of battle. I hope he would have kept his head. Aren't the Greek myths revealing in their analysis of human behavior? And after you peel down all the layers, isn't all love just a form of self-love? There have been a succession of distorted views of the Mideast by Western artists. Are the sheiks really more obsessed with lucre and poontang than the average American? In this picture of Joan of Arc, please note the kindly cardinal who is so concerned with Joan's soul that he is plotting to burn the sin out of her. I can see myself as a member of the landed gentry in Dickens, England. I'd be quite interested in obtaining exotic pets from remote corners of the world. Why were little girls of the Victorian age so much cuter than today's variety? Was it their fashion sense? As a balding man, I think back fondly on the hair of my youth. Where did those golden tresses go? In this colorful reimagining, I receive a tribute kiss from my friend John Cohen. Photoshop allows one to improve upon the normal relations of life. If Madam X were homely and bald and had access to Prozac, perhaps the John Singer Sargent portrait would have been less scandalous. Judgment confounded by beauty. The title says it all. I think of this portrait by Ang as one of Cinderella's stepsisters, the one hidden from the public in a Swiss sanatorium for the criminally insane. I imagined an unpublished Ambrose Bierce story about a Civil War soldier who is lured to his death by a comely vixen. When my Photoshop oeuvre failed to land me an exhibition at my own art school, feelings of self-pity and rage overwhelm me. I still think they are nuts for not begging me to exhibit my work. <laughs>